Good afternoon. Uh, we're going to be doing a figure painting demo today. And um, first I just wanted to show you what I'll be using, which is that um, I'm always having a rag available. And I keep this on my shoulder, so you'll be seeing uh, brushes get daubed off on this rag all the time as they exit the screen and, and I daub them off on my shoulder. And I'll have a sponge, which I'll also be daubing off to, to regulate the moisture level of the brush. I'll have a little tissue off screen and I'll bring it on screen occasionally to remove water before uh, I paint in certain areas. And then I'll have a dirty water dish and a clean water dish, which is over here on the side. And this stays clean all the time and I use it for um, applying water when I wanna soften an edge. And then I'll be using just a few brushes, most likely. Uh, I'll have synthetics that I'll sometimes use, little rounds. And I have here a little Chinese calligraphy brush, which I like to use. And then I have a flat that is a synthetic that I use for applying water. And I use this because it um, doesn't deposit very much water on the paper and yet also allows me a controlled edge. So you'll see when we're painting, this has a lot of value. I can't just put tons of water on the paper, I can't control my edges. So I'm not using a mop while I'm painting. What I am using a mop for today is to wet the back of my paper. So here's an older painting that I did, and I am gonna wet the back, and, um, and I'm gonna turn it over, I'm gonna let it soak in. And I almost always do this if I have the time. It'll allow me to sort of stretch the watercolor clock and um, slow things down. The paper won't dry as fast and it'll let me lift paint more easily. There's a lot of nice benefits to wetting the back. So it's nice and wet and saturated. I flop it over. It sticks to the board through water tension. And away we go. So um, I'm gonna let that soak up. And then I'm gonna talk a tiny bit about my pigment mixture. So I don't mix burnt sienna and um, ultramarine blue to get my browns and I, for this type of subject, and I don't use um, yellows and purples to get my browns for this kind of subject, both of which are nice mixtures for other sorts of things. The problem is sometimes those pigments separate and um, you can get a pretty blue or a pretty purpley looking body and it doesn't look so healthy. So um, I'm often looking for a kind of warm uh, body-like experience full of some light and health. So I don't really try to match the skin tone of the figure, um, but I do want them to look human and I want them to look vibrant. So I'll, I'll pick a variety of warm colors. This is a Winsor Newton Carmine, but it could be a Quinn Magenta or some other uh, Lizarum Crimson, substitute. Uh, here I have like cat orange, this is raw sienna. All of these give me this kind of nice mm, brownie red, right? And then I'll come over here and this is thalo yellow green. And one day while I was painting at, at figures, I accidentally had it on my palette and I grabbed it by accident and it was sort of like making penicillin. I suddenly discovered that when I added this warm saturated green to my mixture, that it not only muted my reds and oranges, but it um, warmed them up. So it's much better than adding a kind of like a, a dark bluish green, like a thalo green or a viridian or something like that, because it's yellower. So you're gonna get a nicer, um, warmer mixture. So I'll be using this mixture to do the paintings. And here's what we'll be painting. This is an earlier piece. It was a two figure piece at the time but I'm gonna use it just to do a single piece. Uh, I'm gonna do the standing figure um, today. So, without further ado, I'm going to be cutting edges and then we're gonna soften them. So, in comes the shoulder. And I can always expand the figure if I need to. I can't erase very much, but I can expand the figure. And that's the back. Here is the back of her arm. 
And um, let's drop in the waist. She was a dancer, so she was very fit. Here's the upper torso, the upper arm. Comes down to the elbow. And then it goes to where her hand will be. And I like to make these little uh, sort of location tools. These are areas that um, I need to get her hand located. And then from there I can build other shapes appropriately. So here's the curve of the butt into the waist. Wraps around into the thigh. And then this is a good point to come and bring in my clean brush. So I daub it off, I hit my little towel, and then I can come in here and we can soften the edge. If I had used a mop, it would deposit too much water. But by using a synthetic, I can um, apply less water and it allows me to control it more so I can get this kind of soft edge when I want. And I can also lift a little pigment if I want, which is nice. And then on the other side, here's the arm. And we're going to soften that too, just a little bit. Here's her elbow, and one shoulder is lower than the other. She's turning towards us. And let me scoot in. So here we go. The neck goes up. Here's her chin. And she has a little cast shadow. And then I'm gonna let her head just sort of be this soft diaphanous shape up top. So I pre-wet the area. I wanna have a, a sort of reserve of um, water available. And here I can see that the paper is buckling underneath. So I flip it back up, wet it, flop it back down, and away we go. Still working. So let's get the concept of the head in. We're just going to let it kind of grow as, as it wants to. And um, in it comes. Now, almost all of these pieces are originally from somebody sitting. So you only have a few minutes to really make the piece before they move on to the next pose. And you have to have a sense of brevity to um, arrive at what you're looking for. You gotta simplify your shapes if you wanna do this with a live model. Let's see if we can get that to come like that a little bit better. There we go. And so here's this, she had her butt came out. Here's the other cheek. And then those two cheeks bonded into one shadow shape. So grab that and bring it around. And then that's going to be the shadow shape on one leg. And she had this nice dynamic pose where this arm actually cast a shadow down across her thigh till it came 
down into here. Now we're going to play with some edges again. So first of all I can soften that edge and daub off my brush. Away we go. Pull that back. And I'm going to also wet the other side. So here's the thigh and I'm going to wet it too. And I have a pretty thirsty brush. I'm not applying very much water. If I apply too much water, everything starts exploding. And it gets very messy very quick. So the brush is pretty dry. And it comes down and the shadow ends here. And then this other leg kicks back. And the shadow here actually gets cast here as well. And I'm going to soften that edge there. And bring that water up to there. There we go. And as you can see, the figure is appearing, right? So from here, it's just about the details and I march along from one shape to the next. If I can't get the whole body in, I don't fret too much about it. What I don't want to do is um, distort the body shape to somehow appeal to a form of composition that you know reality isn't allowing me to achieve. So I'm always paying attention to you know, building one form onto the next form and helping that guide me as I um, construct the body, right? As long as each form is the correct scale to the next form, then all is well. The moment I start thinking, well, I wish I had gotten that foot in or something like that, then th that's, you know, a, a problematic experience because suddenly I am um, misrepresenting the shape of the body in order to arrive at something that I'm really interested in arriving at, but the painting experience isn't allowing. Um, here we have the piece behind the back of the knee. Um, from here, I can begin to add in the darker values that I'd like. So for example, this is a good opportunity to either bring in the small synthetic or uh, the bigger synthetic that I have, set aside my water brush, and I actually am gonna mix up a darker value of this original pigment. So here I have the original pigment, Bring it over here, and this is where I might add like a daub of ultramarine blue, something. We want it to be not only darker, but also um, thicker. It needs to be thicker. So I draw it off. And now, wet into wet, I can begin to form some additional details in her body. So here I'm mixing up a purple, and I'm dropping that green into it, trying to get a darker value of the original hue, right? I want it to be similar, but darker. under the butt. Here I can make the crack so I can separate the two cheeks with this gentle transition in value. As long as I stay within the original shapes I've created with 
this lighter value, then the pigment won't, of course, run. It still stays wherever it, I drop it. So we control this darker application with a recognizing where we've laid the original application. And then I want to give a little bit of body to this hair so that it complements the other areas. That'll be just about it for this figure. And we are uh, at the 15 minute mark and that's not bad since uh, we started with some information on the process. Thank you very much.